So famous soy milk manufacturer Vita Soy International Holdings, listed in Hong Kong, has taken a beating over the last year. Its share price has plunged close to 60%. But what are the reasons for this significant slump? Let's investigate further for today. But first, hi, my name is Stanley. I'm the co-founder of ValueInvestAsia.com, an investment portal where we give you investment news and in-depth analysis on listed company every single week. So if you're new to this channel, remember to hit that subscribe button so you'll not miss out on any of our videos. Today, let's look at Vitasoy. Vitasoy is the largest non-carbonated beverage and food manufacturer in Hong Kong right now. Vitasoy products were originally centered on the high-protein soy milk drink that the group first produced. But right now, it has expanded into a wider range of beverage such as fruit juice, tea, milk tea, water, and even tofu. All these are under the brand Vita. Over the years, Vita Soy has successfully developed a very special attachment with the Hong Kong people. Many Hong Kongers might find Vita Soy with very fond past memory, referring it to the brand as a childhood in a box. In the 1980s and 1990s, it was the golden era of Vitasoy as it expanded aggressively. Today, the market are sold in around 40 markets around the world, including mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, Australia, New Zealand, even US and Canada. But mainland China is still their largest revenue contributor right now, taking up about two-thirds of its revenue. Vitasoy growth in mainland China has been remarkable. The group has also benefited from China's increasing household income and a shift towards healthier drinks. However, the business in mainland China has really taken a hit recently, and that is why its share price has also tumbled significantly as well. So here are three key reasons why Vitasoy's share price is falling. Number one, consumer boycott. Vitasoy triggered a very strong boycott, especially in China, against its beverage back in July 2021. That came after an internal memo that went viral, which expressed condolences to the family members of an employee who stabbed a police officer and later on killed himself. The memo really angered netizens as they criticized the company for indirectly supporting violence and terrorist act. The Hong Kong authorities classified the episode of attack as a lone wolf attack saying that the computer that they seized from the employee's home showed that he has been radicalized. Nevertheless, the incident occurred during a very tense day in the city during a pro-democracy demonstration in Hong Kong, and therefore it gotten a lot of media attention. And so it became a public relation fiasco. The matter was made worse as local Hong Kong media start to be the first to report that the company has expressed condolences to the assailant family in the internal memo. Peter Soy then tried to deny responsibility for sending that memo, saying that it is just an act of another employee. But Peter Soy's explanation did not stop the outrage among Chinese consumers, who accused the company of protecting a terrorist. The boycotters continued to pressure Vita Soy, saying that the company's support for the attacker's family is equivalent to endorsing such action and terrorism. Following the incident, two Chinese actors also cut ties with Vitasoy. And lastly came the profit warning. Vitasoy issued a profit warning in early August saying that the operating profit for the last six months ending September 2021 will be around the range of either a profit of $60 million to a loss of $50 million. The company attributed the drop to mainly a sharp drop in demand in the second half of 2021. Things got quite out of hand for Vitasoy. Its product were even removed from some retailers and merchants in mainland China. So while the company shared that its product is gradually returning to its shelf, uh, it says that the loss of sales during those peak summer period has a material impact on its revenue and profitability. So when the company finally report its six-month interim report in November 2021, its revenue for the past six months fell 18% to 3.6 billion Hong Kong dollars, and the net profit dropped 95% to just 33 million Hong Kong dollars. 
In view of the disappointing result, the company has implemented a very comprehensive program to help to accelerate sales recovery in mainland China. At the same time, the company did not declare any dividend as the priority was given to restore its mainland China business. So what can investors really learn from the whole episode? Well, this is not the first time that companies face pressure from consumers in China. Well, over the past few years, many foreign companies operating in China has also faced backlash in social media, sometimes over cultural insensitivity issue and sometimes over political issue. This is especially true after the US-China trade war broke out in late 2018, where nationalistic feelings grew much stronger among the Chinese, especially towards foreign goods. So companies like H&M, Nike and Adidas have all filled the wrath of the Chinese consumer after they came out as members of the Better Cotton Initiative, which affected the cotton industry in Xinjiang. So for this company, they really have to make a choice. Do they risk their business in China or should they just stick to their own business practices? But there are also other ways that foreign businesses can run into trouble with the Chinese consumer. Many have faced these challenges when they issue a statement or advertising that is deemed cultural insensitive. For example, the Italian luxury brand Dolce & Gabbana really felt the wrath of the Chinese consumer and also the social media trolls when they released three video advertising in 2018, showing that a Chinese model is struggling to eat Italian food with chopstick. The ad was widely seen as racist and led to a backlash with several Chinese retailers pulling the brand product. Politics, on the other hand, present an entirely different and even more sensitive challenge for companies. Political stance or commentary can jeopardize a brand future in China. Even the NBA was not shielded from that. For example, the ex-Houston Rocket manager, Daryl Morey, tweeted a support for pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong. And right after that, the state-owned media company CCTV and Tencent Holding, which stream NBA games in China, say that they will stop broadcasting any Houston Rocket matches. The Chinese Basketball Association also suspended its cooperation with Houston Rocket, as did other Chinese companies like Li Ning and the club sponsor in China, the Shanghai Pudong Development Bank. Back in 2017, South Korean company faced such an opposition. This is after South Korea agreed to install a US missile system, which Beijing said that could be used to spy on China. But the US and South Korea claim that it is intended just to defend against North Korea. And what subsequently happened is that the Korea Tourism Organization estimated that the spat really cost the country tourism around 6.5 billion in lost revenue. And also, Korean cosmetic and entertainment industry has to endure the impact as well. But perhaps the biggest loser that I can think of was to Korean conglomerate Lotte, when it provided the land that it owned to South Korea government for the missile defense system. The company ended up having to sell off its chain of convenience store in China to another Chinese company as the result of the controversy. So the power of the Chinese consumer is something to be reckoned with. Having said that, it is also the case that most of the time, these foreign companies are never really excluded from China permanently. The key question for them seems to be how long such boycott can last and can the company really withstand it? So I do think that Vitasoy has a good chance to turn around their ship in China, but it just depends how long it will take. So what do you think of Vitasoy? Do you think that it has the potential to turn around its business? Do share your thoughts with us below. If you have gotten value from this video, I hope you give us a like and share it with a friend who you might think will benefit from it as well. And if you're ready to take the next step into investing, you can always check out our free investing course at valueinvestasia.com slash free course. As always, till we meet again, my name is Stanley, invest safely.